Believe it or not, these film photos were not taken with color film. The negatives are black and white. The process used to make them into color photos is called the three color method, or as I will be calling it, trichrome photography. The name for this process comes from the fact that you use three color filters, red, green, and blue, to capture three photos. These photos are then combined to create a full color image. Now seeing as I've developed an interest in film photography over the past year, I figured it would be a pretty interesting experiment to try taking color pictures like they did back in the 1800s. Since I'm only interested in experimenting with this and not going all in with trichrome, I decided the best choice for filters would be to use colored gels. These are usually used to change the color of studio lights. My biggest concern about this was that the gels would be cloudy. However, once I got them and savored the peelies, I saw that the clarity was actually decent, so I stuck with them. I did a quick test with my digital camera first so that I could figure out how to actually combine the three images into one using GIMP. Turns out, it's actually quite simple. All you need to do is align the images, open each one in GIMP, set the mode to grayscale for each picture, open a new project, set the mode to RGB, go into the channels tab and select only the red channel, copy the red image into the channel, anchor the layer, then repeat for the green and blue channels. <sighs> Once you're done, that's it. You have a color image. The only issue with using gels, which you may have noticed, is that the image's colors aren't exactly true to life. For my purposes, however, I'm okay with that, because I can digitally adjust the colors to my liking. I know that some people will say that that's sacrilegious to do to film photos, but this process does inherently require an image editing software to pull off. So, whatever. Now that I have the process down, I just have to do it with film. Shouldn't be too hard. There's a couple things you should keep in mind when you're shooting trichrome photos. The main thing is that you really need to nail exposure for each photo. Messing up exposure for just one shot will cause strange color shifts in the final image. Another thing to consider is that you need the camera to be completely stationary. This means you always need to use a tripod. You also need to be extremely careful while touching the camera in any way. Advancing the film, threading filters onto the lens, focusing, anything you do must be done as gingerly as possible. If you keep all that in mind while shooting, you'll be rewarded later with fascinating photos that no one is taking because of how difficult and limiting this process is. So now that the photos have been taken and developed, all we have to do now is combine them into color images. This is what the whole contact sheet looks like. There's something so satisfying to me about seeing all the triplicate images right next to each other like this. The only issue is that this portion of the film didn't seem to get developed. Regardless, this mishap only affected one frame, so the end result won't be ruined, it's just gonna be unique. Anyway, here's a nice compilation of all the final images. As you can see, some of the pictures turned out better than others. Even though I tried my best, I did mess up the exposure for a few of the photos, like this one. I'm pretty sure this was caused by a cloud moving in front of the sun when I took the green photo. The lesson learned here is that even though you can adjust the colors all you want in post, it's still better just to get them right without needing to go through that effort. I think this is the best shot I took. I feel like the color tones and overall grit of the image come pretty close to looking like Aerochrome, which has a kind of expired but still saturated look to it. The only main difference is that the trees in my picture aren't bright red. I also love the fact that the waves at the base of the cliff are multicolored, which is an example of something called the Harris shutter effect. For shots 6, 7, and 8, I wanted to showcase that effect with the water and steam. The results for these were successful, but kind of unremarkable in my opinion. And as you can see here, the undeveloped patch on that one frame turned out to be the red photo for this image. I was expecting the image to be aesthetically ruined by the imperfection, but 
I don't think it is in this case. The splotch strongly resembles a light leak, which gives the final image its own analog charm. So yeah, that's all the photos. I think the biggest thing I learned from doing this is that landscape and nature photography benefit the most when you add color to them. In black and white, these photos look and feel pretty unremarkable, but the moment you add color, you can see the blue in the sky and the green in the pine trees. It adds an extra layer of complexity to the picture that you can relate to more. Color has the power to inject life into mediocre photos, and in a future video, I plan on exploring the colorful effects that trichroming can have. But what if instead of standard black and white film, I used infrared sensitive black and white film with an infrared filter? Subscribe if you want to see how that goes. And that's about everything from me. Thanks for watching, everybody.